Hello and welcome to my last scheduled game dev diary for Redacted Index. In this entry, I'll be showing off what I've made as a whole over the past 10 weeks, and I'll be going over future plans, changes, and my thoughts on the project. First, let's talk about the overall progress regarding implementation I've made. Here's the current trailer board for the project, which I've been using to keep track of the mechanics that have to be done. As you can see, there are a lot of things I'm working on, and a lot of things to be done, with only a few things that are actually completed. I think, to actually get this project finished in time, I'll probably have to majorly narrow down my scope on how detailed I want some of these things to be, such as enemy models and overall audio needing to be very simplistic if I wanted to get it in the game at all. And here's the Gantt chart again, where I've highlighted the current week with a red outline and I've tinted the relevant column cells. To try and show what I've done on a graph visually, I've colored each component in a color ranging from dark to bright, bright being closer to done and darker being less, and I've shown an estimate of the completion percentage based on the Trello board. As you can see, I've managed to get a decent portion of the work I originally set out for myself done, and a lot of the stuff that isn't started relied on team members which don't actually exist. All right, more voiceover content. You can see here the styling section has not changed much. The mechanics haven't changed much. I'll show them off in a second. I've been trying to commit a little bit more to that tower design um, that I might have talked about where this is going to be a cyberpunk, uh, well, abandoned station area where this would have had a lot of different people and places. So I've tried to recreate that as best as I can by adding different levels and there would be different buildings, but I haven't implemented them. Um, it does take inspiration from the verticality of uh, Alien Isolation and a little bit from Outer Wilds. And I've actually also recently been playing Elden Ring and I've taken pointers from that game's level design. So here you can see I'm wandering around A1. I know that there's an enemy here because I've implemented it, but a player would actually find it by wandering and then getting caught from behind. Uh, there I throw my tool and the, the enemy sees it and chases it. Here I've got a tool screech activating actually. So I'll throw the tool and that when it goes red there, it, um, it makes a sound so the enemy hears it and chases it. Though I retrieve my tool and the enemy chases me here, so I run away. If it touches me, the level will reset, or more like the loop will restart, but yeah. There's a bug at the moment that the enemies can't use stairs, so I'll just use that to, you know, escape. But here's another train. Um, I've implemented them to transition between scenes. The, uh, <clears throat> they work on a timing system, so you will be able to wait for it for to come into different times, but yeah, is a transition scene. Um, you can skip this transition scene by holding E. Um, there will be an indicator for that. Otherwise, this is not what it would look like, obviously, with the floating world, but yeah. Here I am in A5. Everything works. This whole area has been reworked. So the steering quarters effect will, will work if if it doesn't bug a little bit there. Here we are. Otherwise, corridors behind the player will just turn into a another different type of corridor, one that connects a little bit better. Everything, all the deleting works. Yep. That's everything to show for now. Let me go on another route. Here we are back on A1. I'm going to go into a different section of the map that I didn't show off in the last run. It's actually coming out quite well, the theme of having to, to go to different areas by, you know, dying and revisiting places that you haven't been to. Here I'm running away from the enemy. The enemy chases you for a certain amount of time, uh, even after it can't see you, but it'll give up after, you know, a couple of seconds of chase. Here I'm hiding from it. You can see, um, this would be a section to the basement, which is a reoccurring important part of this section of the map, but it isn't implemented. There would be an enemy down there that links to the corridor beast and the silent. 
um, in A5, but yeah, here I'm exploring it, having a look around. There are memories, which I'll show off in a second. That's the basement down there. That part will be blocked off. Here, I, I know the enemy has returned back to its little hole. Here's the basement area, which doesn't extend further than this. This door is locked. You need to get a key to open that. The key would be in the little monster's lair, but it's not implemented. Here's a, another secret area, which would have information about that key and maybe a little bit more context to this area. And that's pretty much everything. From the gameplay, it's pretty clear that the demo is in an unfinished, unpolished state, which shouldn't be surprising considering this is only milestone 2 out of 3. Currently, only the bare bones of gameplay loops are visible, and they are neither fun nor very deep. That said, the core gameplay is at least partially visible, and this demo does demonstrate what this game might eventually play like. It does also somewhat feature a few of the themes and aesthetics I wanted to have, um, so I wouldn't call this project a failure by any means, especially since these last few weeks will be the most important in deciding the overall quality. I was very aware when beginning working on this project that it would be challenging to manage time cleanly, as number one, I didn't know if I could have any team members work with me, so I only had a blurry vision of how the final aesthetic would look. Number two, I tend to overscope in general, so I have to constantly reel in my ambitions, which cause some change of requirement problems seen in the A5 and the rework thing. Number three, I usually focus on mechanics, so level design has been a weak point of mine, and this game depends on it quite a bit. Uh, I would like to say that I feel like I've gotten a lot better at it over the course of this project, though. And finally, number four, my professional work coincidentally happens to have very similarly timed deadlines for projects, which interferes with the crunch time for this game. I've tried to play off my strengths by making the game feel interesting through all the systems that I've put into place, such as the memories and the enemies, but unfortunately the game still feels very empty at the moment, and it'll require a lot more depth with those mechanics to change that. An example of mechanical depth can be seen in Arrow Wilds' Quantum Rocks. They're seemingly useless to the player at first, as they just seem like maybe storytelling content or world-building features. But as the game progresses, the player learns how to use them um, by layering mechanics they learn from other areas on top of them to eventually turn them into sort of teleporting platforms, which can be used to access areas previously unavailable to the player. With all this said, to progress from here, I think adding puzzles and gameplay, especially in larger sections of the game, such as the A5 corridors and A1 main area, and working on polishing the game through the adjusting of game feel and with the addition of audio, will add a lot of interesting content to play through in this demo. Regarding the puzzles, I've actually designed quite a few, such as how the player will get the key to open the door to the basement by sneaking into the camping monster's lair, but I haven't implemented them just yet. I will also need to re-implement the fog and lighting effects, as right now the only horror component of this game is the stealth system, and it's only partially functional at the moment. An important feature in developing games is to consider game feel. How the game responds to the user with feedback such as sounds and indicators is very integral to making a game feel fun and satisfying to play. My game as it stands right now doesn't really have much of that, as I've been focusing on implementation of the raw mechanics. It is an incredibly important part of the game though to look at, so I will be going into it when I'm polishing the game within the next few weeks. I've noticed this problem because at the moment none of the mechanics feel good to use, and whenever I complete a challenge in the game, such as bypassing an enemy as seen in the gameplay, the gratifying feeling of success is just not there. To try and solve these problems, I've baked in a few design decisions that I'll be attempting to implement, such as adding animations to the enemies to allow the player to see the confused reactions of being escaped. Another solution related to this game's inspiration, our wilds, would be to have small music clips whenever the player reaches a key milestone, such as in that game flying into space for the first time, and this game would be reaching those back rooms. Uh, even adding simply sound effects and maybe a small animation to the memories updated indicator would work well as a solid reward, as the core gameplay revolves around that little indicator signaling that the player did a good job. 
Thanks for watching my final game dev diary for Redacted Index. While these videos are relatively rewarding to put out, they take a lot of time and add a significant amount of stress to my weekly life, especially with mounting pressures to finish my projects for both university and professional work. So I don't believe I'll be making more of these, at least in the near future. I will be uploading this game to my itch.io in a little more than a month and linking that project in the description of these videos though. That will also mark the end of me being a bachelor's student in games design, as I'll be graduating directly after the submission of this project. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in whatever my next video on this channel will be.